Anywhere Gaming's The World Engine. Matthew here from MiniWarGaming.com and it's time for another story time for the World Engine 40k narrative campaign. Now, if you've already seen the previous ones, great. If you haven't, spoiler alert, I am going to talk about what happened in the last missions and then continue the story so that you know what's going to happen in the next missions, or at least you know how the next missions are going to start. Of course, you have to watch them in order to see them. So if you haven't yet watched missions 2A and 2B, stop this right now, go back and watch those from last week because otherwise there will be spoilers. So in those two missions, what we saw was first off Davicus and his small force that managed to escape from Cesarus's stasis cells thanks to the power surges or whatever is happening inside of this uh, tomb world, found a power node that they were able to disable. And they went in there and they speared a bunch of scarabs for him. Cesarus tried to stop them with his augmented forces and did hurt a lot of them, killed Terminators, uh, Stern Guard took more casualties, the Tactical Marines took more casualties. So he did, uh, Davicus did lose more of his men, but uh, Davicus was heroic and killed a lot of stuff. And in the end, they were able to capture the power node and then disable it, which thanks to the power surges and uh, the, the, the instability of the entire tomb world was enough to drop the void shields around one of the null field pylons where Captain Antaro and his squad with reinforcements received from the cruiser that's just outside of, outside of this null zone in the warp, sending in more reinforcements, was able to actually go and uh, disrupt, thanks to the help of some heroes such as Minadius, the Imperial Knight, and Commissar Khrushchev with a bunch of his conscripts. And Kanum personally led the counteroffense to that but in his deranged mind thought it was charging an Imperial Knight would be a glorious battle and it was gloriously horrible for him as Nadia stomped all over the flares and in the end uh, Khrushchev was, or Kanem was sent back to his reanimation chambers to be reassembled. So he was destroyed by both uh, Khrushchev and Nadia and all the conscripts that were in there just beating on him until he stayed down long enough not to be able to reassemble as the Necrons love to do. So with the capture of this pylon, the tech priest who survived the battle, but barely, he got, uh, got run down by a bunch of scarabs, but then was able to, um, to get back up and actually go back into the fight, thankfully unharmed. He was able to tap into it and not only disable it, which created a hole in the null field matrix or in this null field altogether, but also was able to divine kind of the, the structure of this and see all the different, uh, the, the matrix of it and how it all led back to the one area of the generator they supposed to be the, the linchpin to this whole thing, which is what they're interested in getting so that they can bring it back if possible to their planet and somehow use it to pull it out of the warp in its entirety, which would allow them to escape to real space permanently. So he's able to do that, which was great. By having this hole in the null field matrix, Matthias, who was aboard the ship finally felt comfortable coming down because being a psyker and all, a null field is just uh, very disconcerting. And, and it's already bad enough for, for humans to be in a null field because it basically it divides them. Their, their souls don't have any connection to the warp or perhaps their souls aren't even in their bodies. Uh, who knows what happens in a null field, but it's even worse for a powerful psyker like Chief Librarian Matthias. So now that that hole was made, he decided to, to send, to, to come personally with a strike force to reinforce and see if they could delve even deeper. At the same time, Captain Antaro and some of the remaining Terminators were able to teleport through, thanks to the null field being down, to reinforce Davicus and his crew. And so now Davicus has been given instructions because they still aren't able to get together because there's too many Necrons between, between the two of them. But they've been getting instructions while they make Planet Strike. That's right, the second game is going to be a 3,000 point Planet Strike game. But while they make Planet Strike, that Davicus goes and actually tries to disrupt further this power grid. Because if they can disrupt it far enough, maybe the whole null field will collapse or perhaps they'll just uh, cause all sorts of other problems for the Necrons. Davicus looks for a very powerful power node and finds one and learns something very interesting. What is actually a main power source in this particular power node is a Catan shard in the center of it, which is being fed on by other generators or however the Necrons have it set up. 
but it's actually a Catan shard just in the middle of it. You can see the energy being pulled from it. He has no idea how the Necrons managed to do something like this or why they would try to tap into the power of their gods or at least the, the, the remnants of their gods in order to power a tomb world and what, uh, what kind of technological reason there would be for this. But he saw it as an opportunity because if it was being powered by a Catan shard, that would, that would tell us why there was so much instability. As a Catan shard is not just going to be pulsing out this normal amount of energy, it's going to be who knows how the inner workings of the Catan work when they're a pure energy being trapped in a living metal form. And so he sets out to, to destroy this power node, but none other than Overlord Kepri show up to oppose him and uh, before Captain Montaro can actually get there with his reinforcements. And so mission 1A is going to be that battle. It's going to be Davicus and his remaining forces fighting Kepri and his bodyguard and some other forces as well as Captain Antaro and these Terminators come in from reserve. So you can watch that one. It's mission 3A, the link below. Following that, we're going to be having a large 3,000 point game. Now the, the result of this is going to depend on, on what happens in mission 3A. So whether or not he gets to disrupt the power node enough, it'll determine whether Matthias is able to fully bring in his forces and have that large game right there. So you're going to have to watch Mission 3A to see what happens before you go to 3B. Of course, Mission 3B will be available to Vault members only. And so if you're not a Vault member, you can still click the link and go sign up for a free seven-day trial. And uh, that helps support us. Uh, is just, just check it out. The majority of people who try it do end up sticking around. I'm not sure if you realize this, but you can get it for as little as $2.99 a month. So there's if you buy the yearly bronze membership, it's, it costs like less than three bucks a month and it really contributes to helping us be able to make all these videos. So go ahead, click the links below, Mission 3A and 3B. Thanks for watching and happy working.